so Cake PHP is very it's it's a really great uh, framework and also compared to other frameworks there there's very simplified versions of it and there's very complex versions of it I didn't want to go to the simplified version because you're still gonna have to learn the way they implement their their framework and and the way they um, have you use things like for example you want to connect to a database or you want to create a variable that kind of thing they have their ways of doing just like WordPress has their own framework they have their own ways to do things every framework has their own way and cake PHP is something that's going to be really easy to learn and then also again you're able to scale up from very simple project to a very complex one so that's the reasoning behind choosing cake PHP uh, so CakePHP is a full stack framework. Uh, it makes building web applications sim simpler, faster, while requiring less code. Uh, it's a modern PHP 7 framework offering flexible database access that makes building both small and complex uh, systems simpler and easier. Uh, so like I was saying, the, you're able to scale up, so it's very powerful and that it's able to build both small and complex systems. And when I mean small, it's not, you can, like, like you, when you go through a tutorial, you usually have like a hello world example. And yes, it's, it's awesome to see it, but it's also very basic. And then it goes from that and it goes to very complicated, like what just happened type <clears> of thing. So um, what CakePHP is kind of, kind of like in the, kind of offers both. You have a very basic type of application that you can, you can easily scale up. So what's really great about these, uh, or about this framework, and there's and there's other ones too. Like for the, um, for example, another one that is probably more popular is called Laravel. So if you guys ever Google Laravel with PHP, if you were to find look for jobs, they're probably going to be looking probably for um, for Laravel. But knowing this and then also being able to um, show a, a company an alternative is is also very impactful as well. But learning one doesn't re really reflect um, that you cannot implement your, uh, what you've learned to another framework, especially your, it's PHP. So at the end of the day, you already know PHP. You can still work with other frameworks. It's, you're not just limited to one. It's like WordPress. You know, right now you're using, you're learning, you're, you've already built websites, I think most of you guys, on WordPress. So if someone were to say, can you build this on a Windows uh, framework, if there are two different languages so you'd have to learn from scratch another language with PHP you have a good advantage on those also Laravel is very complicated to, to start up you need um, basically a, a an additional uh, virtual server and configuration and it gets very very complicated the way it's architected so so you can definitely find a lot of ways to screw things up and things fail um, versus cake PHP has been really great. Also, it's very performant versus other ones. Uh, what's really great about uh, Cake PHP is that it uses convention over configuration, which uh, which basically this means that lots of little detail choices, such as how you name your classes, how um, how your database tables are named, the URLs generated, and lots of other bits and pieces have a convention in place. So they already have a system in place for you how to do things and how to name things. There, there you have a system for it. But the great thing about it is that doesn't mean that you have to obey by it. You can definitely break the rule of how they tell you how to do things. The good thing about following their guide is um, if you have other projects that are also built on the same framework, you can easily understand how they are built and how to figure out where problems might exist. And the same thing with team members. Um, once other team members understand it and know it, it's easy for them to follow along how, how it's built. It's a, also an MVC framework. Have you guys, I, I'm sure you guys did with, with, um, with Susan, but basically uh, it's, it's an MVC framework, uh, which stands for Model View Controller. Uh, it's a software architecture pattern commonly used for developing user interfaces that divides an application to three intersect, intersected interconnected parts so um, basically you have a model 
which is model basically means it's connected to some kind of database and then you have uh, uh, a view or a display of that information and a controller basically that is like the engine or the the programming aspect of 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 those two things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, another thing about Cake PHP is it's object oriented, and so you'll this is another good term to learn. It's OOP. So it's object oriented programming. Uh, it's a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which may contain data in the form of fields, often known as attributes, and then code in the form of procedures, often known as methods, which basically mean functions. So just like we saw in our variables portion, when you create a variable and you and then you you create a object type variable, that's essentially what an object is, right? You create an object, and then within this object, you can have properties. So basically, you're stating variables within that object. So you can state things like if if you had an object that was a person, you can say first name, last name, email. Those are all properties of that object. But then let's say you have first name and last name and you wanted a way to connect both first name and last name into one thing or do a, um, or if it was a checkout object which is basically you have a, a you know an array of items and you needed to get a, a subtotal of that you can you would need a function to do those things so like add first name and last name together or add all the um, all, add all the item prices together to get a subtotal you would you would create a function for that, but in this object oriented programming um, I guess um, ideology it's called a method so that's that's basically what the function is it would be you would you would call it a method and then as far as their um, the way cake PHP handles the models, which is the model layer is responsible for retrieving data. Converting into a primary meaningful concept concepts in your application. This includes processing, validating, associating, and other tasks related to handling data. Uh, that's a really great tool that um, frameworks have. You don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to connecting to your database, um, knowing what properties within or what fields you define within your table. Um, the validating part is really great because once you set up validating, and like let's say if you have, you know, uh, 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 or once you actually once you create a form where people upload these, you know, these avatars, they're you're gonna want to validate that information. So you want to know, hey, is this a zip file or hey, is this a PNG file or, or not a PNG file, but a, a 3D like a specific um, extension that the file that's being uploaded. You want to make sure that's the file that they uploaded. You also want to validate the size. Maybe you don't want people to upload something larger than I don't know how much how big file sizes are, but let's say they're they're never bigger than 100 megabytes. You want to have validation for that as well. Um, so there's a lot of or or for example the 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 names of the candidates. You want to make sure they don't um, um, have a longer length than 100 uh, characters, which I know you'll do in the database side. But you need a uh, uh, some kind of error message that says, "Hey, this is not validated," or maybe the last name or the email should be unique. <laughs> Those are the things that you can specify um, in your validation. Yeah. So if you set um, your database, say you know it can't be longer than 100 characters, but you don't do validation for that, what happens? So on the user side or so, sides? Yeah. So let's just say you weren't using a framework; you're just doing it straight up with PHP. You're gonna get some kind of um, MySQL database error, right? Because um, there's, well, actually, you said uh, characters, right? Yeah. If it's characters, actually, you will, you will not get an error. It will just put as much information in, and then it will cut off. So you basically, you would lose whatever else they stated after that. So it would work, but you wouldn't get whatever. Right. And if it was essential information you wouldn't know, right? And your user wouldn't know. To them, they're like, oh yeah, I put, like, let's just say um, it was an address, right? And you, for some reason, by mistake, you put 30 characters um, in, that, in, that, in, the, in the table side of things. And you don't know that people are actually submitting their addresses, but it's all of them are cut off, right? So yeah. there'd be nothing in the log file? There would be, 
No, right, because it's no not evidence. an there's not an error. Yeah. There's nothing for you to warn. The yeah. user doesn't know, so yeah. they can report back to you and tell you, "Hey, I tried submitting, but my mm -hmm. address like they don't they can't check the database. So, mm -hmm. you know, no one will know until you check. You know, however you you go and do the reporting, um, that's when you'll find out. Oh, damn! Like you know, a simple mistake on the on the on the on the size limit causes problems. And then validating would it do that exactly? It would actually respond back like, "Hey, we couldn't, you know, like, please submit, please um, uh, shorten your your um, what do you call it your um, your address or something." Like that. Yeah. So those are the error responses you can you can you can customize on all these validation settings. You can customize specifically what error message gets sent back to the user, which is pretty great. And then also. And that's before it even hits the database, so it wouldn't. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and then, and you can get more in depth, and that's what's crazy, about, or what's really great about these frameworks, and, and specifically KPHP, is that you can get really in depth on how you handle things and how you program things. That you can start very elementary on it, and then get very, very complex later. Uh, so the view is basically it renders a presentation of the mo model data. Being separated from the model objects, it is responsible for using the information it has available to produce any presentational interface uh, your application might need. So anything that, um, so think of it like a, a, like a page template, I guess, in WordPress. So you have um, the title variable available to you, you have the content, you have the date, those kind of things, and then you're kind of like specifying where those that information gets put in in the page template so that's that's essentially what a view is you, you have a view of whatever model data you you're specifically working on or you're trying to display and then the controller layer handles requests from users um, it is responsible for rendering a response with the aid of both uh, the model and the view layers the controller can be seen as a manager that ensures that all resources needed for completing a task are delegated to the correct workers. Um, so, so again, it's like it's it, since we're building dynamic websites, there's going to be data that a uh, controller needs to access. Whether you're creating a new row in the database or you're uh, you're uh, querying from it to get certain information or you're querying all of it, the controller is that that's the piece that does that action. It it requests data and then delivers it so that way the view can then display it. That's essentially what all the controller does. And you can do a lot of, again, you can do a lot of things in here. I was going to go over the conventions real quick. And um, for the controller convention, uh, th again, this is what, um, how Cake PHP, without doing any additional code, it just knows where things exist, how things are structured, just by naming the file or naming the database, or naming the table. It just knows how everything works, which is really great. Um, the controller class names are plural. It's a Pascal case, and the end in control, and, and it has, it, and it has um, controller in the end. So for example, if you have a user's table, you would actually have a controller, typically, that you would call user. So you would actually name your controller user's controller. So I'm not saying user controller, I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying users controller. And then if you have multiple names, or like, so, you, so in, that, in that example there on the left, it's called article categories. You would actually say article and then categories, plural, uh, controller. So notice that article is singular there. So it follows exactly like, um, like table. It should. It should. It makes things super easy if you if you name everything the same. And again, you can break that rule. You can name the table something different. You can name this different. But um, automatically, if you label it the same, it'll know where everything's at without you having to configure anything. You can so if you do decide of if you do decide to break away from it, that's additional work on your end that you have to do. So does Cake set up the table, the database and tables? No, no. So the table, okay. you still have to design and you still have to create okay. just like 
we're gonna like the way you've already done, and we're still gonna do and 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 tweak today. Um, but at that point, then you would use that naming convention, right? So okay. from what you guys have created, we're gonna go individually, and we're gonna define, okay. make sure like yep. the the field names are according to this, and also the table names are are also according mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And so just what you were pointing out there is like when you were saying users controllers, that means your table is users plural. Users, correct. So if it was just user, your table was just user. It wouldn't know it exists. It wouldn't know what's happening. Right. You would then have to, yeah. like, in the code, since you can call it user, singular mm -hmm. in, the in the database, you then have to write a piece of code that says, my table name is user in the database. So it's possible. It's just kind of like, why? 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 Yeah. You know, like, you know, if it does that, it, all that work for you. <clears throat> yeah. The file and class name conventions. Um, so I'll just go over. So for example, so just like we talked about the controller, basically it's the file name of the controller is just .php. That's that's basically what I'm saying here. So like the an example of earlier was users controller. The file name would be just users controller .php. Then the table. Uh, a database table, which would be in a different directory. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. You would say the name of the of the table of the table, and then the word table with capital T dot PHP. So it'd be like users table dot PHP, and then a view is also sim the same way. So you have the name, and then view capital V dot PHP. Um, and then going back to that, that user's example, so the database convention is to actually use the term that you're, that you, of your table name in a plural way. So you wouldn't use user, you would use users. Um, also to, um, it's great just have it all lowercase. I actually use, I actually uh, recommend that all your table names, all your field names are all um, uh, lowercase. And then also to, on the database side, KPHP likes underscores, so they understand where um, where uh, like a multiple word happens, or you're associating associating tables together. It knows by that underscore um, how things are happening. So there you can see how article underscore categories, and then uh, user underscore favorite underscore pages would be a field name. Same thing with first name, It'd be first underscore name. It can get kind of long, but it, it again, when you look at all the advantages that uh, a framework has, when it, once it knows what you have or what you set up, it makes things a lot easier. So like that user favorite pages table, mm -hmm. it would be user, capital U, capital F, all together, right? Capital P, controller, capital C, right, that PHP. That would be the file. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then the model, which is basically when you're telling this, these would be actual, um, I guess, files that you would create in in your uh, repository. Uh, you would just use table. So going back to the users example, it's users table, um, and then like the one you were just mentioning, user favorite pages table. So you can see the more words that are involved, the more lengthier the terms are, but um, it all works out at the end. So that's for the model, um, and then the the views the same way. So if you have a users or articles, it'll be users. Um, uh, wait, let me see this one. Let me skip to this one. So here, I guess if you um, they use templates. So I don't know if y'all have used any templating with JavaScript. Or any of that, so they have like their own extension name. For example, handlebars. It's .hbs. Oh, yeah, so, you see that. Yeah. Uh, so they have their own extension, and 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 basically what that does is that that framework you're using to render uh, a display of something, it knows where variables exist within your HTML. So in here, PHP or sorry, Cake PHP uses um, CTP. So whenever your uh, CTP file exists, it that's that's basically a view. And you'll have PHP um, 
portions in there, but mainly it's for HTML. And then just to summarize it there, um, just kind of going over exactly what we just talked about. So you have, if you have a, a database called articles, the table name would be articles. If um, <coughs> your, your table class would be articles table, and then you would see where it, it kind of points out where it would be at. So for, for here, it would be in your model directory, and then a table directory, and then that's where your actual file would be uh, created. Um, an entity for cake PHP is basically like those properties, so like um, that um, that you define. That's where entity would be. So it would be within an entity directory, and then article.php, and then back to the controller. There would be a controller directory, and you would place um, your file there. So it'd be users or articles controller.php, and then view. There would be a, a template directory, and there you kind of define the controller or the, the kind of basically the model. So there's articles, and then this file you see it's index.ctp. Index.ctp is like the default, right? So just like if you create a new website, you know, in, a, in, a, in a, any typical web server, you'll you'll create an index.php. Cake PHP automatically knows as well that index.ctp means like a default. It's kind of like your the view all, uh, essentially. And I'll explain that to you.